everyone, welcome back to Chops Garage and we're out in another one of the sales cars and we're out in the Skoda Fabia, one of the recent videos. As you know with all my sales cars, before I start throwing any money at them, I take them for a good drive. Home and back is about probably 50 minutes in total, uh, so it's a good opportunity for any faults to come up with the vehicle. There's a few testing hills as you're about to see. and. So we get a good chance to check the brakes, the suspension, and the performance through the gears. If the clutch is going to slip, all those kind of nice things we get to check. Um, it makes sense to me because I don't know to put money into cars that aren't going to be any good or going to cost too much to resolve. And it also means I'm one of the few salespeople who can give you genuine feedback on how the used vehicle drives. So this person's going to pull up the hill in front of us now, um, but the Fabio seems to be. Going along all right, it's doing better than this 2016 Clio is. We'll have to drop it down a gear though because of them. So we've got a little Mini Cooper coming up behind us. So many comment, uh, many thanks for all the comments on the previous video on the Fabia where I said, you know, is it not good enough to retail? What am I going to do with it kind of thing? There were a lot of good suggestions on it. Um, if you don't know what we're talking about, you probably need to go back and watch that video. But some of the good suggestions were to wrap the roof white after sanding it down and get a replacement bonnet from the breakers yard and then I would have like a cheap Monte Carlo edition paint the wheels black great ideas it would certainly look better and I think then you probably realize maybe 2295 for it something like that maybe even a little bit more but I'll give you the reasonings as to why I wouldn't do that even now knowing that the car drives fantastic because it really does. There is no knocks or bangs from the suspension. The gearbox is smooth. It, no overheating problems. No warning lights other than no fuel. It drives absolutely brilliantly. All of the electrics work and it has got auxiliary input. So a lot of you corrected me on that. It's down by the gear lever. The only electrical problem I found is the driver's door won't lock on the remote key or manually. So it does need a new lock on the driver's door. You can't lock it at the moment. But other than that, it drives absolutely brilliant. This is the 12 valve of the three cylinder. I've had the six valve before, found it a bit slow. This 12 valve is really good actually. It's a bit of a revelation to me. It's like a completely different engine. It pulls so much better, so much smoother. It's got plenty of torque, plenty of get up and go. I'm really quite surprised how nippy it is. So really, really pleased with those side of things. So you might say, with knowing it drives so well, why not do the work that you suggested? Which is a fair enough question. But the thing with it is, if I sell it now for 1,500 quid as is, I'll make a couple hundred, two or 300 pounds out of it. Let's say, possibly 300 pounds, let's say. Now, the issue with every 100 pounds or more I spend on this car is I will pay 16 pound in VAT. So it won't put another 100 pound in my pocket. It'll put 84 pounds in my pocket. So that's number one problem. Now I'm not gonna bank the extra cash. So let's say we do sell this for two, three, let's make it round, make life easier. And we could sell it for say 1500 as it is. That's 800 pounds difference. Okay, okay, ideally 800 pounds. So what's a bonnet gonna cost me? It's gonna probably cost me, by the time it's posted, 150 quid. Wrap and paint's 50 quid. So 200 quid's out of that straight away. So we're down to 600 pounds. If I'm going, and that's before we start taking out the fat, if I'm going to then try and retail it at that full price, I need to stick a new MOT in it. That's going to cost me at least easily 150 quid because even with the best one in the world, driving as well as it is, it's going to need something, isn't it? So where are we now? We had 800 quid extra, but we have um, lost, well, I've already lost myself, we lost say um, 350 quid in bits and bobs. So we're down to 500 pounds extra cash. To do that work, it's gonna probably take me a couple of days. So we've got two days labor. To prep this and sell it for 1500 is about two hours labor to wash it, hoover it out, and just give it a quick polish over. So we've got, uh, say, a two or 300 pound profit for a few hours work versus, say, 500 pounds for two days. Then on top of that, I've got to take a warranty out on it, that's for £100 if I fully retail it, so it's actually £400. And then, 
as I said, I've got the VAT, which is going to be what, over another hundred pounds, so I'm down to 300 pounds. So, long and short of it is, I will end up making the same profit by doing next to nothing to the car as I will spending two days finding parts, fitting parts, prepping, painting, you know, the, the whole thing, and then potentially still have comebacks on it. So that is the reasoning behind why even though it drives fantastically, which again I am very impressed with, it will be better just to stick it out the door as is. So I will update you on how I get on with that um, a bit later. So just a quick reminder on that as well. I will sell with no warranty. So I, get, I always get asked questions about how warranty works. I, will, I can sell a car with no warranty. It's entirely legal to sell a car with no warranty because every sale comes under the Consumer Act. A lot of people say sell it sold as seen or sell it trade. I cannot sell trade other than to another trader. So if anybody ever puts trade sale on your receipt and you're not a trader and you've not told them you're a trader, obviously if you're dishonest it's a different matter, but if you're not a trader and they put tra trade on the receipt, it means absolutely nothing, you still have your consumer rights. Only a trader to trader can get rid of the consumer rights. They can put sold as seen on there, that means nothing. Again, still falls under your consumer rights. The only way you can truly sell a car to a consumer without any comeback is spares or repair. And in order for it to be spares or repair, you are not allowed to test drive the vehicle on a public road and you are not allowed to drive it away from their premises. A true spares and repair car has to be trailered away and cannot be test driven on public roads. Because as soon as a dealer allows you to do that, test drive the vehicle on a public road or drive it away, he is saying that it is roadworthy. And obviously under the Consumer Rights Act, a sale of a vehicle, it has to be roadworthy. So, I can only sell this car to another consumer, to a consumer as without warranty because there's no obligation at all to put a warranty on a vehicle because all vehicles are already covered by the Consumer Rights Act and the first six months which says they are as described and they are fit for purpose. So with this vehicle as described means I will list any of the faults I know like the door lock not working and the poor paint. Paint wouldn't be covered anyway because that doesn't make the car unfit for purpose. It will still run and drive with bad paint. So back to the unit today, we've got a lot going on. We've got a silver Sia Ibiza back from having its advisory free MOT. It needs a good mallet. It's a really clean car, it's not clean a lot, so I just need to get a good mallet on that. I want to get it done ASAP, get that up for sale, so that we can then get onto the Volvo, which has been sitting around for a while and doesn't need a lot to get ready, so we're going to crack on with the Volvo. In between that, we want to do the basic clean on this and get this up for sale. Now, obviously, we sold Diffusion. Um, at the weekend, sold in less than 24 hours. I listed it, first person messaged me, first person came and bought it. Um, so what we're gonna do, we'll go through the numbers and look, because I did promise to go through the numbers with some of the cars, and we'll go through and we'll have a look at how we did on that fusion. And then you're gonna see, you're gonna get the answer to the question a lot of you have asked is that why wouldn't you bother doing, spending the time on this Fabio as you spend more time on that fusion? And when you look at it, you'll understand why. So yesterday you need to get on with the CIB to get it photographed up for retail. So this has come back now advisory free with all the MOT work done. We've got the correct alloy wheel on it. Now all I've done here is given it a snow foam, a wash down, a going over with a tar remover, then another snow foam and a wash. And it's actually come out really, really clean. The bodywork is fantastic on it. It really is. I'm looking at it and thinking it hardly even needs a polish. It's just a tiny bit of lacquer peel just there for some reason. But it seems to be very strong on the edges. It's not like lifting up everywhere else. I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe there was a bit of bird poo went bad or something. But now the rest of it is really clean. I'll still give it a quick machine polish just to get a real bright shine out of it. But the alloys are in good nick. It's a nice little car this. Anyway, so let's have a look at those fusion numbers and see what we made out of all the work on that one. So the Ford Fusion from the earlier video sold on Saturday, less than 24 hours after listing it to the first person that came along to see it. And we sold it for 
2,545 pounds. We had it up for 2,795, um, but this is a trade sale to another trader with no warranty. So as per my explanation with the Fabio, this is the only instance where actually there is no comeback because it is a trade to trade sale. Uh, I would have had to stick the warranty on it, £100, which I've not had to incur now. It really needed a cam belt doing, which would have cost me about £200, so £350 on, on that side of things. And it potentially needed either a replacement wheel or wheel bearing because there's a bit of a hum from the front left-hand side. It had been noted on previous MOTs that it, it might need something. It wasn't picked up in this MOT, but potential was there for it to need a bit. So we negotiated that, and I'm happy with that, £2,545. Obviously, a big <laughs> up, the, up yours to the, all the people that told me it was worth about £3.50 and a Freddo bar, um, as always, proved them wrong. So uh, how much did it cost? What was the profit? Blah, blah, blah. So we started off by paying £600 for it because it was so battered and it needed everything. We knew it needed a cam belt, that kind of thing. We also knew it was going to cost £200 to get picked up because it was a fair way away from me. That's a big cost that's incurred in all of the vehicles, being down here in the southwest. People say, how do you get as much money as you do for the cars? Well, cars have to be more expensive down here because we have to pay a lot to get them down here in the first place because there isn't a pool of cars to pick from. So it costs £200 to get the vehicle down here. So big cost. We had the MOT with Moors. They did me a fantastic price again on the MOT, Legends. Uh, I did do the oil filter, air filter on it, and that cost £32.30. Then I bought some cockpit shine, which will be used on other vehicles, but I've included it all in that. I've included the entire cost of our cell cutting compound. Um, we will use it on other cars, but I include the full cost in the car, get it over and done with, and allowed to factor it into other cars. Paint, uh, masking tape, um, you know, uh, masking sheet, all that kind of thing, £95. Uh, and the cans of wheel silver, £23 to refurb on the wheels. Now, obviously, I use some other consumables, but again, like with the Farcel, they were already accounted for in a previous vehicle, so I don't need to add them onto this. Then I've got my VAT down here. I can reclaim my VAT. I can reclaim £40 worth of VAT. So my total was £1,081.10 total costs. Sale was 2545 The margin, as a used car dealer i've covered this before but you might be new to this as a used car dealer doing things properly and legitimately uh who's vat registered you have to pay uh 20 vat on the margin you make well it works out one sixth or something so um the vat is 243 pounds i have to pay the vat man for the sale of that vehicle after the vat and after the cost the net profit was 1260 pounds and 10 pence So you now have people going, oh, James, but you haven't factored in your time. This is what I'm being paid for my time, guys. I don't see why people don't get that. That's what I'm being paid for my time. I've got about 10 hours work in that vehicle, I'd say, in total, about 10 hours. So I'm being paid £126 an hour to work on that vehicle. Now, you could say you have overheads. That's a fair argument. I've got the electric. I've got the cost of the unit. I've got my insurances. So we could spread that across the vehicle sales in a month and say this vehicle needs to make, say, £150 contribution towards overheads, let's say. So if we take that out of the equation, cover up, make a contribution towards overheads, we're still talking £1,100. So again, on you know 10 hours of work, I'm still being paid £111 an hour for my work that's the profit is what i get paid for the hours of work i put in some people don't seem to understand that they seem to think i need to deduct hours from that and then work out what my profit is i'd only need to do that if i was paying somebody else to do the car if i was paying somebody a salary for 10 hours of work i'd need to deduct that from this and then that would be my true net profit but this is what i'm paying myself for doing the job so 1100 pounds let's say after a contribution so a healthy healthy profit but you can see why on this vehicle it's worth doing where the net value of the, the the retail value of the vehicle is two and a half and I've bought it for six. Now with the Skoda, I think it owes me £1,300 and the retail value is about two two. So that's why it doesn't work out doing the work on it. Basically, I overpaid for the car. You make money on cars when you buy the car, not when you sell it, because it's all about how, what price you get the vehicle for is all about how much profit you end up making. 
So hopefully that's helpful. Now, obviously, they don't all work out that way. I will do a rundown you on the last few vehicles. I've been promising for a while. I'll do a rundown with you on the last few vehicles as um, as to how much I've made out of those. Again, this is a prime example of what I talk about a lot, where someone now turns around and goes, I sold a car for a dealer for £600. He then had it in his forecourt for two and a half grand. For two and a half grand, he made £1,900 out of my car. It doesn't work that way. So frustrating when you hear that. Firstly, you've got the VAT. Then you've got the actual preparation of the vehicle to or even be able to retail it on the forecourt. Then you, you can see from my previous video how much effort I put in to prepare that vehicle. Comment down below now if any of you um, resent me earning £1,100 out of that Fusion after the amount of work I put into it, the level of preparation I did for it. Um, to get it ready for retail because I think if any of you got a problem with it then it's unreasonable to be honest so some of you could say well at the end of the day you could have sold that car for cheaper to that chap and um, you'd have still made a good profit out of it so on the ones where you're you're doing well like this, you should sell them a bit cheaper and give, give us something back to the people it doesn't work that way either guys because there's other vehicles where I'm not making that much money out of it where there's a big problem with it I deal with a warranty claim after the sale of the vehicle where I end up only making maybe three four hundred pounds out of a vehicle so you have to take the wins where you can to counter some of the losses if you sold this car cheaper because you happen to do well on it then you'd end up making no money because there's other vehicles you actually could potentially lose money from so hopefully that makes sense. And again, to all those people that told me that the Fusion, they could pick up one locally, the same miles, the same age for, you know, £4.50 in a flipping bag of skips. <laughs> Sorry, it's <laughs> there you go. There's a proof in the pudding. If I'd overpriced it and I was overselling it, it wouldn't have sold in less than 24 hours. But we'll still go through that merry-go-round again. We've got it on the Micra, got it on the Fabia. So I just like keep continuously just proving people. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for watching that. There'll be another video out really soon. Um, do keep the comments coming, even if they're negative ones, because I love them all. I get in there and comment them. Uh, sometimes get uh, accused of deleting comments. Never deleted a comment in the entire time I've been doing the channel. I can honestly tell you that. The only ones that have ever been deleted have been deleted by YouTube for having inappropriate language and them or being a link to pornography or anything like that. So if you're going to put negative stuff down, I'll leave it out there. It's no problem at all. Other people comment it. I can comment it. I find it amusing. Um, but it really doesn't bother me at all. I have to say overall, though, 99% of comments, really positive, really helpful. So thanks ever so much for them. I do apologize as I don't get back to um, responding to all of them. I do try and do like a big marathon of going through and replying to every comment. It might be yours was just <laughs> the one before I cut off and had to stop. But do keep them coming. Thanks as always, guys. Catch you again soon.